Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and hopefully this episode is coming out on Friday. Maybe Saturday, but you know what? It's out, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, it's going to be maybe a little shorter. Don't be upset. Don't be upset because it's going to be a good one. Yeah, we have like a lot of almost like updates to past stories and just like mini topics to talk about. There wasn't like one major thing. I mean, I guess we do have a main topic, but it's mostly just us updating you on some of the things that have come out about topics we've covered before. Correct. Um, what should we start with? I mean, it's up to you because you have hinted that you have a surprise update and I don't really want to wait till the end for that. Do I have to? <sighs> I thought maybe we save it for the end, but I guess we can start with it. Okay. And I actually <laughs> don't even, I'm going to like be reading them for the first time with you. Um, so Ooh. it'll be fun. Cold reads. <clears throat> Bentelect. No. Oh my God. He apologized. Is that what you're covering? Is that it? Okay. Well, so I think we should cover that. He deleted it already, but. Really? Yeah. Was it just a text thing or did he? No, he was on camera apologizing. Oh, there there has to be one somewhere. Oh, no, I'm sure someone re-uploaded it. But yeah, he. I went on his page the other day and mm, it ain't there no more. I was editing Angelica. <laughs> Angelica and us, I feel like we just like toss back and forth. She's like, oh, I learned this from Do We Know Them. But then she had more info than we had the first time we covered it. And that is because more people have submitted text messages. Oh no, gross. If you guys don't remember Bentelec, should we refresh memory for people sure. who don't you, know him? You, like, will you refresh them while I look up the... <sighs> Unfortunately, yes, I, I, I can do that. So Bentelec is a TikToker and his main shtick is doing like those reading memes and laughing in a very fake way. It's very cringe and it's whatever. But that's not why we're here. We won't show you Yeah, <laughs> We won't do that to you. Basically, what happened was that he was supposed to have a girl that happens to be a sex worker on his show on YouTube or his video or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Before the girl went to go film with him, I think same day, he texted her and said, hey, want to collab for your OnlyFans? And she's like, mm, no, <laughs> no thanks. And then he's like, cool, don't want to do the video with you anymore, bye. And that's obviously me paraphrasing, but that was the like main sentiment of it. And then she exposed him for doing that. And then it turns out he had done that to many other people, like wanted to collab with them on their OnlyFans. And it's like, first of all, has he even shown his wiener online? I don't know, but the, the best part is they kept hinting that he had like some, he's like, I know how to make us some money on OnlyFans. <laughs> like he had some big secret or like a huge dick that he was gonna whip out. <laughs> yeah, with. like, well, it has to be some, something of the sort. Well, you know, the weird guys, tend to have big peepees. I feel like he was just using his followers to try to get with some of these women, obviously, but also it's like simultaneously, let's say they agree to it. You're not like publicly showing your privates. So now all of a sudden you're willing to do that just because you want to sleep with someone. I was just going to say that actually. I'm like, I don't feel like anyone that is normally not naked on camera just like is does suddenly it like, once yeah, in a let's while. do it. Yeah. It seems like the type of decision you like dive all in or yeah, not at all. You don't 100%. want to dip your toes into that water. So yeah, I found that interesting, but I guess he wanted to sleep with them so bad that he was like, oh yeah, fuck it. Like if they see my wiener, I don't care. Well, basically what we gathered from reading his messages is that he's basically the most desperate person ever. Like even one of them, he offered to pay her a thousand dollars. Oh my God, that's right. And he's also just generally creepy. And even his apology, I was like, I had the ick when I was watching it. I'm like, oh, interesting. Well, and just like he fits, like any girl watching this will um, probably be able to relate, especially if you've done online dating. You know, when uh, you start talking to a guy and then you like, like maybe tell them you're not interested or something, but then suddenly they go from being very interested to like, well, yeah, I didn't want you anyway. Like, oh yeah, all ugly. of a sudden you're an ugly bitch. Like, it's like, oh, interesting. The messages that we're going to read, it's that times a million. Oh, like, God. I don't even know how to explain it, but um, should we watch that first or should we read first? Let's see his apology first. Hey guys, there's a lot being said about me on the internet right now, and I just wanted to clear the air. The first thing I want to say is I'm sorry to anyone that I've made feel uncomfortable. I want to say to any girl who I've been rude to, whether through text or in person, that I'm sorry. I understand that me being sorry does not excuse that kind of behavior. I will continue to work on myself and do better. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The end. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. guys. <laughs> My issue with apologies like this is like, okay, you're sorry. Check. We know you're saying you're sorry. You're not like denying that you did the thing. Like he's not saying these messages are fake or like this didn't happen. So that's okay. That's one. Oh, hey there, guys. Um, quick update already. Apparently. 
apparently he did post this video and it is still up on his TikTok, although the comments are turned off. But before that, apparently he tweeted on August 13th and that has since been deleted. But of course there are screenshots, so it reads as follows. I've recently been accused of some heinous actions and would like the opportunity to share my disgust at these accusations. I'm a firm believer in the rights and equality of all humans, including women. Off to a great start. I grew up in a home with three sisters and no brothers, so I learned very early on the importance, power, love, and abilities women have. Because <laughs> otherwise, apparently, you wouldn't learn that. He continues. They deserve to be cherished and uplifted and treated with respect, and that's how I live my life. Mm, that's debatable. Then he says, I do not condone the statements or accusations that have suddenly been hoisted upon me, and I hope to speak to anyone who feels they have been wronged. Interesting. That was very different than the video uh, we just watched that he posted after this, but um, sure. So apparently that tweet came out originally on August 13th, and although he did delete it, it had already been saved in a screen recording by our girl Jordan Max, who had put all these allegations out there to begin with. Then after about five days, he did post the video that we just watched. And since he posted that on the 18th, he has posted um, as of right now, which is the first 25 more TikToks. But in those 25 TikToks that follow, uh, there's a decent amount that have the comments turned off. And then the ones that don't have the comments turned off, have quite a bit of comments that aren't about the TikToks that they're commenting on, and they mostly include people quoting his really embarrassing and cringy comments that he made to all the girls. So yeah, I'd venture to say the apology didn't go over too well. And also, um, another reason he may have deleted his first one and then posted this one later is because a day after he posted his Twitter non-apology, Jordan Max came out with more screenshots, and that is what we're about to read, so. Back to past us. You're saying you're gonna continue to work on yourself. And that's when How I get annoyed. That? Yes, that's when I get annoyed. It's like, okay, apologize for something, but let us know. Like, what do you need to work on? How are you gonna work on it? Because otherwise this is literally a crock of shit. Like it's just, it's important to be very transparent in situations like this and be like, yo, I'm a dick because of X, Y, and Z. And I now understand that. And this is exactly how I'm gonna prevent that from happening again. But just being like, I'm gonna work on it. Thanks. <laughs> it's like, okay. okay. Um, oh my God, you guys. So Jordan Max is the one that had leaked her conversation originally. And then she also had like anonymous girls sending in their experiences with him. And it just turned into this whole thing. So here's when she goes, okay, folks, we've got another woman coming forward with insane text messages from Bentelect. And y'all are really still going to defend this guy? Were people defending him? Hello, have you... Do you know where we are right now, Lily? There's always, you can literally say stabbing people is fun and you're gonna have people being like, no, I mean, I agree. Mm, like, it's just true. insane, true, true. the internet. Um, <clears throat> oh God, okay, let's do this. So I don't know what transpired before this, but this is the beginning of the conversation that we are seeing. And it's the girl going, well, I guess it's just not meant to be then with a shrug emoji. <laughs> and he goes, facts, no hard feelings, but yeah, it ain't working, peace peace sign emoji. Then he says, and for your future self, if you're going to turn around on a guy and say, hey, I'm not down for the friends with benefits shit, just say that before you go through all the bullshit. Boring as fuck. Crying laughing emoji three times. Then he says, not my problem that you turned around and quit drinking because you're an alcoholic and now pass out at 8 p.m. Fucking peace out, bitch. Oh my God. Don't worry, it gets worse. She says, Clearly, there are some hard feelings on your part. <laughs> and he said, LOL, it's whatever. And then she continues. And I am far from an alcoholic, crying laughing emoji. And he says, I don't like giving time and attention to someone who is full of shit. I've been trying to hang out and it's been blah, blah, blah excuses every single time. So just don't waste people's time in the future and you won't get hard feelings. Far from an alcoholic, but you fucking pass out at four in the fucking morning, sleep for three hours, then pass out at 10 o'clock and sleep till three in the morning, then continue to sleep till noon. I'm like, that was so many times you just threw out there. I like, don't even. I was like, not him coming for Lily's sleep schedule. <laughs> I know, I was like, is that a bad sleep schedule? I don't know. Um, and then he says, okay, with crying laughing. Two, two different kinds of crying laughing emojis. He's really mm, spicing into emojis. It, spicing it up. And then he says, anyway, I'm done. I just had to say that because you're full of shit. 
And then she says, clearly I wasn't that interested to begin with and you weren't able to take a hint a month ago. If I actually wanted to hang out with you, I would have made an effort. And then he says, then shut the fuck up and quit wasting people's time, you stupid bitch. <gasps> if I recall, I told you I didn't want shit to do with you when you were like, oh well, I would actually date you, but you're boring as fuck. Just shut the fuck up and go to bed. <laughs> what is it with her, him and her sleeping? What, why is he so like in What's wrong in that? with napping, Bentelect? Literally, like I've never seen someone come so hard for someone's sleep schedule this is so weird seriously and then she goes sounds like you need some anger management help uh -oh. <laughs> the v sign well he didn't take kindly to that and he said be careful who you say that to maria because there are people who really need help with that <laughs> Super fucking disrespectful to say that to someone. And also a very basic ass bitch thing to say. There's a reason you've been single for so many years and it's because no one wants you and no one gives a fuck about you because you aren't shit. You're not fun. You're boring as fuck. So shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. Basic ass boring loser. I'm sorry, but like this is actually a middle school kid. I literally, I actually, I was gonna say, I can't believe she responded at all, but I definitely probably would have. Oh yeah, I probably would have too. But like my thing is like if someone told me you need anger management classes or help or whatever i would just be like oh, okay great come back like i wouldn't even be offended by that at all I, I don't know like the fact he got so mad you mean you wouldn't respond with like five more text messages be in careful a row who you say that to maria like what the fuck and he goes basic ass boring loser and then she said also super disrespectful to tell someone they are an alcoholic especially when that person has their degree in addiction counseling <laughs> and then he goes shut up Good, good one, Ben. He said, yeah, and you use that degree pretty well, don't you? What is... No, literally, he's a, he's a toddler. <laughs> then she says, and I actually just got out of a year-long relationship in July, so... <laughs> And he goes, no, you fucking don't even have a job. You're a fucking loser. Yeah, and that worked out well then. I, he must be drunk. These, I feel like this doesn't make sense. Yeah, and that worked out well then that... <laughs> no, because no one wants to be with you because you're boring and fake and stupid as fuck. You're like, oh, well, wait, no, I didn't care. And that's why I put no effort in, but still texting me back. So you're just a fake ass bitch. And then she said, wow, you really need to learn how to take rejection. Well, th yeah, I mean, that's an understatement. And she's being very kind in her responses. First of all, the amount of times he uses the word bitch, like I want to fight. fuck. I, yeah, I, no, but I want to fight. I hate men that use the word bitch. Like, I just, I can't. I mean, his best insults are like, you're a fucking loser and a fake ass bitch or a basic ass, like, get better ammo. Also, for this second part of the conversation, the tweet that Jordan Max attaches them to, she says, according to this woman who also wishes to remain anonymous because clearly this dude is unhinged, they dated on and off a few years ago, but people don't really change, do they? So the conversation continues, her going, wow, you really need to learn how to take a rejection. And you're the one sending five texts for every one I sent, crying laughing emoji. Mm -hmm. And he goes, girls like you who say, oh, well, you weren't able to take the hint, but still text and say shit or fake as fuck. And I'm glad that you and I are no longer fucking talking. So please delete my number, carry on with your fake ass, boring fucking life, and God help any guy that you gets involved with that loose pussy. That you gets involved with that loose... Yeah, that is what it says. Okay, with that <laughs> loose pussy, because you're just fucking lame. And then he apparently is cracking himself up. And then he says, mic drop, ho. <laughs> <laughs> That first paragraph is possibly the longest run-on sentence I have ever seen in my it life. It was very, it was really hard There's for no me to read. There's no punctuation at all. Um, then she says, I'm sure your TikTok fans will love the way you talk to women when I post these screenshots. And he says, good luck. I stand by every single word I just said to you. Anyway, peace Do out. Do you? Don't contact me. Uh, me thinks you're going to change your mind real quick, uh, Bentelect, <laughs> but sure. Anyway, peace out. Don't contact me again. And then she said, bye, with a waving emoji. And then he continues, El Mayo, you're lame as fuck. Bro, he is so mad. <laughs> it's he is it's so, so mad. embarrassing. And then she says, glad you think so. And then he said, I'm not the only one. As if he has this like roster of men behind him being like, yeah, I hate her too. He says, I'm not the only one. Why are you typing? Just get over it. Not him literally sending a message for her to go the fuck away and then staring at his phone to see if she types. Like, this is so ridiculous. Like, the ratio of things he has said to what she has said. That's why it's bothering him so much because 
she doesn't give a shit and he does and he's just losing it. Oh my God. Well, then she says, you can believe whatever you want. I'm not as lame as I appear to you when I'm actually interested in someone. Wink. Oh and my then, God. LOL. I've seen what you're like when you're interested in someone. You don't talk. You aren't fun. You're boring. It's whatever. I mean, you really just have nothing to offer. So I'm out. Goodbye. I'm pretty sure you already really said whatever? bye like five times. It doesn't times, seem though. like it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. Just leave. Yeah. But he doesn't. And then she goes, Hard to talk when you never stop talking. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I gave you time to stop talking. I literally tell people about my most boring date and it was with you. Do you, oh my God. Do you don't have anything to say? You're just boring and you said it yourself. So just give up and understand that you can't hang. That's all. That's all there is. I hope he was wasted for this because this is the weirdest conversation yeah, ever. Yeah, it sounds like he could have been drunk, honestly. And then she says, okay, cool. Be signed. Bye. And then he goes, bye. Don't contact me again. Like real talk. You might have forgot, but you were the one who messaged me because you were at Uptown or some bullshit. Check yourself, Maria. You really need to do that more often. Crying laughing emoji. Shut up. She didn't say anything. Oh, one more. Oh my God. Shut up. Don't type. Don't message me again. You were in Uptown and you hit... Yeah, you already said that, sir. You were in Uptown and you hit me up. I had no intention of talking to you ever again because I have zero interest in you whatsoever. Okay, I understand you're probably upset about that. Not him literally having a whole conversation with himself. Did she delete messages or is he literally <laughs> talking to himself? Then she says, but you did. And then tried to hang out multiple times after. So literally, that's what I'm saying. Like he wanted to hang out with her, but she's so boring that he tells everyone about how boring their date was. Oh, get ready though, because he says, but get it through your head that there's nothing here and you're the one with feelings. And your fake ass kept texting back. So you wasted my time and stop doing that. You're fake, you're boring, you're lame. She is wasting your time. He's literally like, I mean, I know that it's like laughable how stupid he is, but he's literally gas lighting the fuck out of her being like there's nothing here you're the one with feelings like you're the one that no she cleared the whole problem was that she didn't want to hang out with you and he's literally said he was leaving this conversation five times i think <laughs> she then responds wouldn't have wasted your time if you didn't try because you had no feelings and you wouldn't be this angry if you didn't have feelings crying laughing emoji and he goes lmao all right i'm done this is exhausting at this point i bet sir <laughs> You've talked a lot. What did he say? <laughs> he says, feelings for a snail? And then a lot of crying laughing emojis. He really cracked himself Wait. up with that one. But I'm so unsure what the snail insult is supposed to allude to. Like, I think like maybe because she's boring and slow in his eyes, she's a snail. <laughs> The like snails are like slow, like speed wise. Like the it. way I had to like literally like lean in to make sure I was reading. I know. That I'm right. like, I'm what like, analogy? Snail. <laughs> that caught me off guard. That's the same. And she said, "It's entertaining seeing everything you are pulling out of your ass right now to try and offend me." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that because I would have said the same shit. You mean the snail one didn't get you? And then he said, "Girl, you were never in my league. So good luck in life." And then she said, "Peace sign." And then it looks like the next day he texts her again and says, daily reminder that you're full of shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then she said, thank you. My boyfriend sure doesn't seem to think so. And clearly you're having trouble getting me off your mind. He responds, says the girl with a boyfriend texting another guy back, crying laughing emoji. Oh my God. Major gotcha. That was super flirty text of her to send you. Oh my God. He says that his text of daily reminder, you're full of shit. That didn't need a response. Just reminding you of who you are as a person. Oh my God. His The juxtaposition to the next text we're about to read is actually mind boggling. So then it, it appears that maybe he has sobered up and he goes, hey, just wanted to apologize for how things left off wasn't trying to be rude or say hurtful things i always thought you were chill so i wanted to say that hope all is well the thing is though is that it's not just like oh uh, sorry for how things left off no dude you were like a fucking dick like you're telling her calling her a bitch you're like i mean it's laughable how stupid you are so it's not that offensive but it's like you're an asshole and you want to just come back like sorry for how things left off fuck you not to mention it makes me wonder like i feel like if he's that aggressive via text like imagine when he would be like in person well something tells me he'd be for lack of a better term a little bitch in person i don't even think he would be like very intimidating at all but at the same time like how the fuck am i supposed to read all of this shit and the other messages that we've covered and then just be like oh so you're working on it okay cool like 
No. How about, like, go to therapy? And even this last text when he's apologizing wasn't trying to be rude or say hurtful things. What were you trying to do? You literally like were trying to say anything so much so that you called her a snail. Like, literally, you were trying to insult her in any way possible. So what the fuck are you on about? His, like, energy is so toxic and is such a reason, number one, I'm glad I'm not dating online. Like, Godspeed to y'all. I was like, me too. I'm just alone forever. <laughs> I just, like, it's this toxic, entitled, old creepy ass energy that scares the fuck out of me. I don't know. Like, I don't think he's going to go out and like punch someone in the face, but I do think he's weird and scary in his own way. It's funny. It's not funny, but it's um, reminiscent of someone that I had an encounter with one time in Vegas. And it was someone that was there in like the, we were with like a larger group. I like wasn't into it at all, but I was like, hanging out with him. We, I don't, we didn't even make out, I don't think, but he was buying me drinks and stuff. And I remember we eventually all go back to the like suite that all the guys at least were staying in. I don't know if I've talked about it on this podcast, but I can't drink hard alcohol. I can only drink a uh, <laughs> Trulies and light beer. Otherwise I get sick. And honestly, if I drink too many beers or too many Trulies, I still get sick. And guess what? I got sick. So he was so mad that I was not like able to hook up with him, which wasn't gonna happen anyway. I, it's like, weirdly, I vividly remember, even though I was borderline blacked out, that I was in the bathroom with the door closed. Like I wasn't like a mess, like throwing up like out in the hotel room, but I was throwing up in the bathroom and he came into the like bedroom. So he wasn't in the bathroom, but like yelling through the door and yelling at me. Saying what? Like this. There, I don't, well, no, I don't remember that vividly, <laughs> but literally I just know that one of my friends like came and like flipped out on him. Like, Leave her alone. Oh and, my like, God. Made a and then, cause our guy friends, he was like a mutual friend. He wasn't one of my friends. And uh, the guys like had a very serious talk with him, but um, it was very reminiscent of this. And it was like, he literally thought because he bought me a few beers, which like, I mean, in Vegas, I guess everything's expensive, but no, buying me a few beers does not entitle you to a hookup and um, also just like no anyway. And he was genuinely like yelling at me, calling me a bitch, being like, oh, you fucking sloppy ass. Like oh my God. stuff like that. It was very, very reminiscent of this. Oh my God, that's literally insane. It's this fucking weird ass entitled energy, but that is scary and dangerous at the same time because as a woman, you also don't know what the fuck a man's gonna do like when they're upset like that. Like you think, oh, okay, they're just like screaming or something, that's one thing. How many stories do you hear of all of a sudden they just grab a fucking weapon and all of a sudden it's like a way different story? Like this is like in ridiculous energy. This is like should not be accepted on any level. I mean, and, and that's like why I immediately went to like, well, what if this was, if this is how he talks in text, I wonder what he's like in right, person. I get that. If he yeah. was in the same kind of mindset because that sounded so much like that guy that he didn't do anything, but also I, my friends were there. But even stuff, though he so. didn't do anything like hurt you physically, I feel like that's super- He verbally assaulted yeah. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, that's super scarring. I would be like absolutely terrified. I mean, the fact that it just like came back so quickly, like it definitely never left. Yeah, I mean, so. uh, hello, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, like men do that all the time and they do that switch on you the second you give them any indication that you're rejecting them because to so many men, I'm not saying all men, okay? To so many men, we are just objects that they would like to like literally just sexually release on. And that it's like a transactional oh, 100%. thing too. It's like, oh, well, I bought her three beers. So that means I'm entitled to 100%. three minutes. Yeah. And I've even like, I grew up with like all male cousins and all brothers and stuff. And I've heard the sentiment like from behind the scenes, how men talk about women just in general. Like when they go on a date, a lot of them, that is what they're expecting. Like, and then we have to protect ourselves and like firmly, but not too harshly, like reject them or like stand our ground on like, hey, I really would prefer not to do that right now. Like it's fucking insane. Like this is just crazy. And it speaks to like just the overall entitled energy. Like you think he just wanted to hang out. No, he wanted to have sex with her. Like that's literally why he's so pissed. And it's just, oh, it's so disgusting. Like the Bentelex of the world can get Wrecked. It's like a mix of the entitlement and then like their own just expectation of what they thought was going to happen. And it's like they're a toddler and can't handle the fact that it didn't play out like that they wanted it to and then they just like lose their it's shit. It's a big reason why right before I met my husband and including when I met my husband, I was like emotionally 
unavailable completely. Like, I would literally, like, if I did hook up with a guy or something, like, if, like, let's say he fell asleep, like, I would leave. Like, I'd just be like, okay, bye. Like, I'm not, like, cuddling with you. I don't want any sort of attachment because it got so sad and it just got so, I don't know, it got very transactional and weird. And when I met my husband, I was, like, very similar to that and he was very similar to that. So we didn't expect to, like, actually open up and have, like, a really, like, the first night we spent together, we had, like, the deepest conversation. We were both crying. Like, that's not what you expect when you hang out with a man. It's just like, oh, okay, like either we're gonna have sex or you're gonna be disappointed that we didn't have sex. So those are the two options we have here. Well, and not to bring up the story if you if you don't want to, but what happened? Didn't you called me one night? Oh my that, god, like, I, yeah. Yeah. I have that story time on my channel. Actually, I went on a date with this guy who was studying to be a doctor. I'll never fucking forget it. That was a different one than you. Oh, that was you, a you dated two. That, yeah, I dated two people studying to be doctors. Oh my god. I know. Look at you. Yeah. Um, they were never doctors, they were just studying. Did you guys have a lot in common? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Why? Because I'm a dumb bitch? Is that what you're saying? It was a joke. <laughs> So basically, uh, we went out for wine. It was really nice. Like we were joking, he paid. Of course he did, because he wanted the transaction Oh, later. 100%. And it was like a $30 bottle of wine, gasp. But it was one of those nights, okay, this part I didn't say on my channel. <laughs> it's TMI, okay, whatever. But sometimes, some of my ladies are gonna relate out there. Sometimes when you don't wanna hook up with a guy, like you will not like shave, you know? Like you'll just be like, I'm not, like I'm gonna put myself in a situation where this is not gonna happen under any circumstance. And I really didn't wanna sleep with him. I don't know why, but I just did it. So when it came time, we went back to his house and he started getting really pushy. And when it came time to, you know, whatever, I was like, hey, we're not gonna hook up. Like I told him flat out. And he tried and tried and tried and tried. And I literally was like, we're not gonna hook up. I've never had a guy do this. He literally looked at me in the face and was like, okay, cool. Uh, are you gonna call an Uber or like literally was just like, get the fuck out bitch and then he's like do you need me to walk you out and I was like no I remember the way out and I called Lily I was was I crying I might have been crying Balling. <laughs> yeah I was yeah, no, so sobbing. upset it was honestly just such a humiliating moment and it's so shitty because it wasn't like not to be like it wasn't my fault it really wasn't my fault like it's just like I didn't want to sleep with you I was being very nice to him I wasn't being mean I remember the reason you were so upset is because you said that that had never happened like you had never, never had someone treat you that like, oh, you you aren't gonna have sex with me, then you just have to. Yeah, like, it just it felt very degrading. Then. And also, side note, he looked very similar to Miles Teller, and I still can't look at Miles Teller the same <laughs> till this day. I think it's sad that so many of us have had similar experiences. Well, in college, and it's even someone that I'm like still like I'll catch up with him every once in a while now. Like we ended up being on good terms afterwards, and he was drunk, and it wasn't. I don't think it reflected how he is as a person. But I wouldn't have sex with him, and he did the same thing he like kicked me out and i had to walk home oh my god it wasn't god. like see that's five miles it was like a half a mile but it was at three in the morning yeah no and he like literally like yelled at me and made me leave he was blacked out but no uh, uh, things like that i find unforgivable not saying that he's a horrible person but just because of the danger that you were in walking home in a fucking college town like that literally could have been the reason your life was ended like it just i don't know that pisses me off instead it was me walking home crying and people going are you okay? <laughs> I love that that's like, how it ended no. up for you. Yeah, no, there's just been too many fucking situations like that. And I'm sure if I really sat and like thought about more, there's just like a billion. It's it's never ending. It's kind of indescribable to explain how shitty it feels to feel like you're like not valued as a human being, like your thoughts or your, you know, just having, not worth having like a conversation with, not worth sitting down with. You're just worth one thing. Exactly, and that's the thing. It's like, especially if it is, I mean, it's never okay, but especially Especially if you've like hung out with them more than once or if you like thought that there was potential that you could hang out with yeah. them more than once and then you're like oh that really yeah because okay. some of them could hide That's it for a little bit was. you know they'll hide it for like the first second date and then all of a sudden if they try something on the third day and you reject them it's you'll never hear from them again if you're a man watching us just uh you know i would hope that you're not one of the people that we're talking about but you know just watch the way you treat uh treat women. All right. Yes. I know we're more like emotionally driven. We do want to have more conversations. Sue us for actually wanting to get to know people before we fuck them. For that very reason, we're also then scarred for life if you do something like Literally, that. Literally, we will remember you till we die. Anyway, that was a long-winded little discussion, but I feel like it was a good one. So we do have a quick little pink sauce update that we can touch on. We, okay. So we had a lost 
episode two Mondays ago. I don't know when it was at this point. And we had actually done an update on Pink Sauce and there's been an update since we even did that video. So in that video, we covered how she started like teasing this pink powder. Like it, it looks like a seasoning. But it seemed also though, like it was almost like a mix so you could make your own pink sauce. Right, like she put it in what looked like ranch or yogurt or something like that and then it looked like a pink sauce. And I don't necessarily even think that's like the worst idea. She's doing the marketing very similar to how she originally did it with the pink sauce, which she's not saying anything. She's just showing herself using it like constantly. Like the marketing's the same. She just doesn't explain anything and just Literally, <laughs> but it's actually not even the worst marketing. I mean, it works. Yeah, people get curious about what she's doing. We've covered the pink sauce a lot on this channel. If you haven't been here for it, it's just basically this woman on TikTok that started selling this pink sauce. She initially started it out of her kitchen, which as you can guess was a disaster. Always a red flag. It was super inconsistent. She was like mislabeling the nutrition facts. People didn't know like if the allergens were properly labeled and bottles were exploding in transit. Yeah, I was gonna say the biggest issue is that she wasn't refrigerating them yep. properly and sealing them properly. So people would get it and it'd be leaking everywhere or it'd be like, if you're getting it shipped from like another state and it's not refrigerated properly, then like, ooh, Well, and also some people had it in their fridge for like a week and it was already like, you know, when something's fermented and it gets like all this pressure build up in the bottle. And it's, it's so that happened to a few people. Then she took that off the market and rebranded with someone called, I think Dave's Gourmet is the name. He basically did the sauces for her in a way where she was able to manufacture it and sell it at places like Walmart, which is where Lily bought it when she tried it on this channel. People started noticing a few differences in this uh, rebranding of the sauce. And one of the main ones was the inconsistency in color. Like some of them were pale. We all it wanted the pink sauce. It's literally called the fucking pink sauce because it's pink, hot pink, one would think. But I think she also used a lot of filters and it confused everyone. Yeah, that for sure, because it definitely was not that pink. It was more of like a, it would be generous to even say it's like a salmon color. <laughs> I feel like it was more of like, it was closer to like an orangish beige almost. Ew, beige, it was beige. And now if you actually see the videos that are coming out of it on clearance, cause spoiler alert, it was on clearance and I guess that means it didn't go too well. The inconsistency is insane. We're talking like there'll be five in a row and none of them are the same color. Hello, that's not normal. Like how many sauces are on the market and I don't see that with any other sauce. It's like, maybe it's like, oh, you need to shake it. No, if you would shake these and they all still look different. When we covered it on our episode that never aired, we um, showed a TikTok that she put up that was basically addressing the pink sauce haters. Okay, the doubters, the naysayers. It said when people are hating, but you just sold 200,000 units of pink pink sauce or something like that, right? Yeah. And surprisingly, a lot of the comments were like, oh my God, I love the pink sauce. Like that's my main sauce. Like it's the sauce I put on everything. Literally our update that like that entire lost episode, it's never airing by the yeah. way, because I feel like every single thing we covered, there's already been like some kind of other update, yeah. including that one, because we ended that one with like, well, I guess she's doing well. Well, that was wrong. <laughs> now, if you search pink sauce, it has video, oh, like here's Moist Critical covered it and it says, pink sauce lady lost everything. <laughs> well, she did because she is now alleging that she basically has seen little to none of the money from the sales of the pink sauce. And she has since started a GoFundMe. Oh my God, I, I wasn't sharing my screen. I was like, are you seeing Oh this? no, I'm not I seeing anything. <laughs> pink sauce chef P launches GoFundMe for justice for the pink sauce. That's what it's called. Oh my God, the GoFundMe is for a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so she's alleging that Dave's Gourmet is not paying her royalties that were owed to her and that she's now being evicted from her place and cannot support her family. And when this was posted nine days ago, the GoFundMe had $701. Let's see how much it has now. Oh my God, she has $25,000 raised with only 87 donations. How is that even possible? Someone donated like fucking 20 grand? What? Oh my God, Kyrie Irving? Wait, what the Dude, fuck? Dude, Kyrie Irving, who's a professional basketball player in the NBA, uh, donated $24,240, which is like, that's a very random amount. Hello? Well, and also couldn't like I donate and just put that as my name? You could, but the amount kind of- That does check out, yes. Checks out. But <laughs> I, that's super random. I almost think though, like- Maybe he really likes if, that sauce. Eh. I was, my tinfoil hat was on for a second, but I was gonna say like, what if it was like she donated to her own GoFundMe to like get it moving and make it look like there was actually donations going in. And then she like happens to just be like a big Kyrie Irving fan and used his name. I don't know. That is a, that is quite a far-fetched theory, but that's, that's interesting. Uh, that's far-fetched, but Kyrie Irving donating $24,000 to Pink Sauce isn't? The thing is that like, if she was lying or someone was lying and pretending to be Kyrie Irving, he could just be like, nah, I didn't do that, what the fuck? 
Like he could just tweet that, like, you know? But anyway, this is her GoFundMe description. And it says, hi, my name is Veronica Shaw. I am the founder of the Pink Sauce LLC, one of the most viral sauce sensations of 2022. There wasn't many. Yeah, I was gonna so, say, yeah, I, I, didn't, guess you I don't been. think you had a whole lot of competition, but sure, yeah, take it, uh, we'll give it to you. As a young entrepreneur with big dreams, I followed my intuition and went forth toward my dream to create something new. I made a few mistakes on the way, which led me to trust a company that is trying to take everything away from me. They lied to me. They are not paying me and are not being transparent about records. I have tried on multiple occasions to try and come to one accord with them, but they refuse to reimburse me for marketing expenses that I spent my own funds towards. Why would she pay for, mar like, did, did she sell the pink sauce? How did this happen? Like, did she sell the pink sauce to a company? Because why would she pay for marketing? That feels like a poor decision. I don't know exactly, but the only similar experience I have to this is I did launch a liquid lipstick, uh, like, a few years back with a brand. And the way that it works is, like, you have a say in how everything is done and like formula and stuff. But once that gets approved, they cover all the costs of production, which is what Dave's Gourmet did. They ship it, they do all of that shit and they do market it to a certain extent by themselves as far as like on their social medias and stuff. But they're not like launching commercials for you or anything like that. So if you decide to do that, I would imagine that would be your own expense. Like if I wanted to be like, I want my liquid lipstick to be seen on YouTube banners. Like they're not gonna do that. I would have to do that. And I guess like if she's making a cut and it sells like she wants it to sell more so it would benefit her to do that exactly but it's well that's that would be the agreement is that she probably got i don't know maybe like a 70 30 split and she got 30 or something like that because they're covering the cost of like everything but if that's the agreement and she's saying she's seen none of the money then that's obviously super shady and weird but she does continue on to say i have been silenced and financially sabotaged i am a single mom and i do everything for my kids right now i don't even have enough money to buy my kids food on my own my mom is on disability and has been giving us 20 dollars just to get by on a daily basis school is a few days away I haven't been able to get my kids clothes or anything. I'm currently facing an eviction that has gone into default. The sheriffs can come to my door any day now. I need legal help. They are refusing to pay me the royalty that is owed to me. I don't know what else to do. I can't give up. I need help. And so I obviously I feel for her. I think that if they really aren't giving her any money out of all that was sold because of the virality of like all of this shit, I think that's fucked up. And maybe that's why Kyrie Irving gave the money. You know, he saw the story and was like, okay, well. Well, I just looked at the, the one of the donations because people can leave comments with their donation and um, someone donated $5 and said, girl, everyone knows that in royalty contracts, you don't start getting paid any royalties until sales revenue crosses a certain threshold. Your sauce was a bust, sales were a joke, the revenues were piss poor, it's all on clearance. You probably haven't been paid anything because you likely aren't entitled to anything. Pound sand and get a real job. That is literally such a stupid fucking comment. First of all, that's not true. So like, for instance, when I got royalties off of the things that I sold, it was done in quarters. It's not done once they sell a certain amount. Like it was just like, okay, in this quarter you sold this much and now we're gonna pay you out. Like that's it. And there's no fucking way in hell, I'm sorry that she didn't make any money. Like this did sell. I'm not saying it's selling consistently right now, but in the beginning when everyone wanted to try it when it was relaunched, like you're gonna tell me she didn't make any sales? Fucking bullshit. Oh my God, everyone is commenting to leave hate yeah, comments. I was like, this is the comment. Comments are awful. Like, why would you donate money to leave a bad comment? No, look at this fucking comment that someone left. You are not special. Now go let your kids know to call me daddy since I'm supporting them. Oh, another person. Hi, chef, in quotes. Did you figure out what the FDA does yet? Because if you guys remember in the beginning of this, she, she thought was it was like, the Federal Department of Agriculture. <laughs> Wait, no, Food and Drug Administration, man. <laughs> oh my God, the next one. That's what you get. <laughs> Why are these people doing, they're paying to do this? That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not just a bunch of hate comments. They're each, it, that shows how petty the fucking internet is. You'll pay you money to it only fans? A woman like you could make up to 400 a month just by, 400 a month, bitch. What is she supposed to do with $400 a month? Buy toilet paper? It continues. You're not super attractive, but a lot of people will subscribe for the laughs. Oh my God. Not it ending with sending positive vibes, smiley face. I, I this is insane. I mean, listen, do I think that she's handled every step of this well? Absolutely not. I think she is cocky. I think she got a little bit too like big. The Karamo show. Yeah, I mean, like there's a billion instances where she was told, hey, X, Y, and Z is something you can improve and she wasn't interested in hearing it. You know, like she did the whole Dave's Gourmet thing because she kind of had to, like everything was just falling apart and it was either do that or your sauce is gonna be a bust and you're probably gonna get in trouble for like making someone sick or something. There's two sides to this. Do I think she could have handled things better? 
Absolutely. But at the same time, did she deserve to like not be given any money from the people who profited off of her idea? No. Like, I feel like how can people even look at that and be like, that's what you get? Well, no, uh, of course she should get money she's entitled to. But I think what a lot of people are implying is that she probably like had a shitty contract or something or like just is making this up. I'm definitely curious if she read the contract properly, because if you've ever had a fucking contract, you need like seven people with like degrees to understand them because they are so annoying in their verbiage and they're always covering their own ass but like I think just the basics of it like how much of a split you get is like very highlighted on a contract it's like this is what this person's getting and this was this person's getting but like I just don't understand um how she could have nothing that that is very strange it's not like she provides proof that she didn't make anything so it's like what if she did make money and then she just spent it or what if she doesn't even need like oh that's a whole other yeah she's doing that make all this up i think that also putting all your eggs in one basket is not a good idea especially when you're launching a like a startup yeah for sure and that's why you know when i saw her doing like the whole pink powder thing i was like you know that's a good idea like go and ride that wave of the pink sauce and see where it takes you but like to just be like okay that one thing and then not i don't know because she was a private chef like you should have just kept doing that and you know making money on the side diversify your income yeah i don't know this is it's sad because she does have kids and i'm always gonna have like a soft spot for that i mean no one should not be able to eat right exactly But I, this is totally unrelated and probably not important. But do you also find it weird that that's the picture she's using? Yeah. I've been staring at it while we were talking. I don't know what's going on. Yep, me too. I was like, I was getting distracted while you were saying stuff because I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. I would just think um, if you titled your GoFundMe, help get justice for the pink sauce, you would have the picture be, you know, the pink sauce and not whatever the hell this is. Yeah, I don't know. I Interesting. I mean, shout out to Kyrie Irving, I guess. And... You know, (laughs) just I don't know what to say. Anyway, that's the pink sauce update. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to buy it for much longer. So go grab it off the clearance shelves or don't because it really wasn't that good. Oh my God, Lily, you're such a bitch. Sorry. I mean, they're not giving her the money anyway. So yeah. Oh my God, that's true. Facts. Anyway, so we have one last topic and this one's a little baby bit old, but still a a goodie. It's still a good one that we wanted to dive into because so many people tagged us on TikTok and it actually kind of like plays off of the whole small business owner. Owners, um, on TikTok because that is kind of what we're talking about. It gives more though um, cake gate vibes, but a million times worse. Oh my God. I, did, how is this old? It's not old, old. I would say this is like two weeks old, max. Okay. Um, I had seen people kind of talking about it and then I watched some of the videos and I was like, what? It makes no sense. Like, I don't understand how people like this exist. But basically, this girl, Emily, posts a TikTok where she explains that she was trying to get this, like, Louis Vuitton, is it knockoff bag? I think that's, or was, I think, was it real? no, I think it might be fake. I think it was, that was definitely knockoff because she only paid 100 Yeah. <laughs> so she's trying to find this, like, Louis Vuitton-esque fringe bag, and I guess she orders it from a small business. But the small business, I, let's just watch her first TikTok. Let's do a story time of when a brand sent me this. Uh, to clarify, that said, bitch, you dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was an email that said that. Okay, so I have been looking for one of those LV fringe bags for a couple weeks. I did my due diligence, clearly not enough, on TikTok. And then I went to Facebook, joined a group, and bought one. All right, so here's my receipt. That's my order number. Um, that's the day I bought it. That's the bag I bought, the total. And this is who I bought it from. Again, it still says order place, custom, because she never sent it. So on Wednesday, August 9th, she puts out a Facebook post and tags everybody and says that bags are going out Thursday and Friday. Mind you, once the six week passed, I've been kind of like getting a little bit irritated, but I didn't want to reach out because I noticed that when other people reach out, she bans them from the group, blocks them, whatever. And so when she makes a post on Wednesday, the 9th, um, I comment on, I say, hey, when will we get tracking? Will it be to our email? She comments back to me and says, most likely, or you can email me. So I come back and just say, I'll wait for the tracking to go to my email. Well, Thursday passed, Friday passed, and now it's Saturday, which is today, August 12th. So I'm talking about it to a friend and I say, hey, I think I'm going to just email her at this point and be kind and just say that I would like a refund because it's well past the turnaround time. And um, tracking never went out on Thursday or Friday. Neither did the ShopPay app, which I paid through. Um, Tracking didn't update there. So at this point, I just want a refund. And in her group rules, you can see here that 
refunds will be given if turnaround time is passed. Which in her group, I had always seen 12 to 27 business days. Jesus. I was like, that's a really long time. That's a month. Business days though, that's only Monday through Friday. Oh, that's like two so months. that's like <laughs> two months. You and me are both like math, two. <laughs> Probably around there. There are 45 business days, nine weeks past the day I bought it. So this is the email that I sent her. You can pause to read. <laughs> Bag is the subject, and it says, Hello, my name is Emily Downey. I bought a bag on June 10th, order number 1014. It's been 45 business days, nine weeks, and I haven't received an update or a tracking number, and at this time, I would like a refund. Thank you. So nice. Which I would say is pretty nice. And this is what she says back. And she gets the response. I don't give refunds. And as stated in the group bag, sh this is a run on. There's no punctuation. Ugh, ben all. Like all over again. Um, actually, a, a lot of these responses will be similar to Ben Delict, I think. But um, I don't give refunds. And as stated in the group, bags shipped yesterday. If you would read, oh, my you is spelled with just a U. And not it saying sent from my iPhone. It's worth noting, like, yes, she's a small business owner, but she's like just runs a Facebook group where she sells like knockoff bags. So it's not... Which I was going to you know, ask, would you feel comfortable buying something from a Facebook group? It depends on the Facebook group. Some Facebook groups can be extremely resourceful. So maybe. I just feel like it's not that hard to set up like an like an Etsy store. Like... Why wouldn't something you more do official, it like, a, like an e-commerce yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, I agree. Like, I agree. But I can't say I would never do it. Because then she even had to have another, like she said she bought it. She paid through another app. Shop like pay. That just feels like too many different things. Yeah. Which, first of all, don't tell me if you would read as if you know anything about me. Second of all, as stated in your group rules, it says if turnaround time is passed, you do refund. So clearly her customer service is awful. And so this is what I say back. Uh, Emily responds, I asked if you would email me with tracking and you said, most likely <laughs> your customer service is disgusting. I'll get a refund through my bank. The business owner responds, that's fine. I'll sue you since you clearly didn't read my group rules. What, what are you going to sue her for? Not, Not reading. reading. Like, People use that way too fucking much. I'll sue you. I'll sue Will you? you? Like, I'm like, Good luck. <laughs> that one was sent from her iPhone too, by of the course. way. This is her response. First of all, what are you going to sue me for? Not sending me a bag <laughs> and not refunding me? So anyway, here are the next messages. Emily says, your group rule stated that a refund would be given if you haven't received your item by the turnaround time. I asked for the tracking and was told it would be emailed to me. I was never updated. Tracking through shop was not updated either. It's been past the turnaround time. Tell your lawyer to contact she me. She doesn't have Smiley a lawyer. Face. The next one does have some punctuation, but it's a little off. Um, <laughs> a lot of extra spaces. It says, will do, space, period, space. <laughs> I clearly posted bags were shipping Friday, space, period, space. <laughs> if you, the letter U, can't read, that's on you with another you. This has to just be like, this is her con. This is a scam and she does this to people a lot and she just annoys them until they get oh, up. Oh, 100%. Like, I don't doubt that for a second. And again, she states, if you can't read, that's on you. Clearly, I can read and you can't because your group rules state for the fifth time that if turnaround time has passed, you will refund. And then I send this message because... At this point, she could have de-escalated the situation. She could have said, oh, I'm so sorry. Here's your tracking number. Literally anything. But she didn't send a bag, and so she doesn't have tracking number. So, pause to read. Emily says, I can read. And asked how I would receive tracking. You never sent tracking. Which I'm sure is because you never sent the bag. <laughs> it's been nine weeks. 45 business days, which is well past TAT which is the turnaround time. I haven't asked for an update or anything until 8.10 when I asked how I would receive tracking. And today when I emailed you because I still haven't received it. You have the grammar of a teenager. I don't think you have the right to tell anyone else they can't read. Period. If you would have sent me the tracking number, this would have been solved. I asked for a refund because it's past the TAT and I didn't receive a tracking number. Per your group rules, refunds are given when it's past the turnaround time. Your lack of customer service will ruin your business. Yeah. Uh, if you can I even call it I don't think this lady has a business. Yeah. And that's when she sends me the lovely message. She literally just said, bitch, you are dumb as fuck. <laughs> Two 
crying laughing emojis. So this is mental act. This is his side yeah, hustle. No, yeah, he works for her. There's no doubt in my mind. There is some colluding happening between those two because they literally speak the same. Literally, and use the same emojis. So this is her TikTok page, Westernique LLC. Her Facebook group is the same. However, I was banned before she even responded to my first message. This is her Instagram page, which I cropped because her kid is in a lot of her pictures. And this is a Facebook page, um, which is separate from the group that I was banned from, but... Which says, Mama Ran Business. Interesting bio <laughs> to choose. But this is the Facebook page, and if I researched beforehand, I would have saw that all of her posts have laugh reacts, which I'm assuming is because the shit that I just went through. Have what? All of her posts have laugh reacts, which I'm assuming is because the shit that I just went through. So I disputed it with my bank and I did get a refund and I'm going to go buy a bag from somebody else and hopefully I get better business. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking about buying from Westernique LLC, uh, maybe find somewhere else. Well, so I guess the thing is though, is that this lady doesn't just have that one. She has like a ton of different pages and has a bunch of different aliases. Oh, no. And actually has been convicted of identity theft. No, you're lying. No. Oh my gosh. Y'all, they had my other account banned because I posted that girl's address with her tracking number. Bet you, you won't come for me again though. So the lady's name that at least she goes by sometimes is Lydia Lee. And some of her uh, posts on that Western Eek page are as follows. Y'all, I have been cussed at, harassed, and threatened all because people don't read. <laughs> what is it with her and the not reading thing? It's like maybe you should um, give them a little more to read because that sent it's like a one sentence disclaimer about the refunds, but. I cannot respond to Facebook messages. If you message me, it will be ignored until Facebook allows me to respond. If you continue to harass me, and cuss at me, I will You're block the only you. person cussing at anyone. Then she says, at everyone. <laughs> we will be closing by the end of the month. What does closing look like? Because it doesn't seem like you have an inventory you're actually shipping out. So what is closing? You're just ending the Facebook page? I think that yes, correct. Then she also says, the girl I'm having issues with is sending trolls to join the group. They have threatened my son's life, etc. I'm closing and removing this group after the bag ship out and everyone has tracking. I'm so sick of this shit and my infant child being drug into this. Drug? I Dragged, think I think word. would be, yeah. Do you think she reads? I maintain, I always say, don't send death threats to anyone ever, but like, I don't think she was gonna Well, she didn't that. show the screenshots of that. She showed like some random Facebook of thing. Of course not, yeah. And then Lydia posts, it's sad that I have to do this every week because people refuse to read and then want to be rude AF. Please initial after reading and it has her shipping stuff where it says you agree to our tat being 16 to 28 business days unless otherwise stated unless is in all caps please read all res oh my god <laughs> the fact that she's bitching about everyone needing to read and like none of her grammar is correct please read all recent posts for updates on orders before posting in the group and asking you will be banned if you do not follow this rule. Um, and here's- Y'all, so we're about to head to the post office. I'm guessing a UFO dropped off bags last night because I have over 300 bags to mail out today. This is the first post office trip. You know what that seems like to me? Just judging by the like engagement level on her Facebook page, which was very low. It was like two people liking something, very, very low engagement. You might have 300 bags to ship out because you haven't shipped them out in fucking forever. And now you're like, just like catching up and being like, okay, well, let me just ship them all. Like, that's what it seems like to me. It doesn't seem like just a consistent order of 300 bags coming in. I thought you were gonna say that she just like wrapped fake shit and like was- That could happen that too, but I'm not, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Here's another post by Emma. And it states that it was left on her front doorstep at 12, 12, 10. Oh, so yeah, one of Lydia's other accounts was um, Paisley Pepper 2.0. She's also had Paisley Pepper 3.0 because she just keeps making new accounts, I guess. So I assume they're also is probably a 1.0. But um, this is Emily doing like a green screen reaction to, I don't know if her real name is Lydia, but that lady's thing where she's trying to provide proof to show that she did ship. But Emily says that that doesn't really check out. And it states that it was left on her front doorstep at 12, 12 today. These are my packages arriving today. Nothing. So you told me before that you shipped my bag on Friday, but all of a sudden you shipped it yesterday and it was delivered today. Did you overnight it? 
because we don't live in the same state. You're a scamming criminal and you're not even good at it. And while we're here, here is a DM to a Navy vet telling them that they should have been shot up. It's a screenshot of Paisley Pepper 3.0, because as I told you, multiple accounts. And she says, fat ass ho, and then follows it up with, yikes, you're a vet? Too bad you didn't get shot up. Oh my God. The fuck? What's wrong with this lady? And you know it's her because just using the use. Oh my God, that's true. It's her MO. And another customer that has complained about her business. And again, here's where she said that she would send tracking numbers by Friday. You are a sad excuse for a small business. Do better. Okay, so after um, all of her videos about me today, I do have a couple comments to make. She literally emailed me today harassing me and threatening me. Do you remember that? Or do you remember this? Oh yeah, no, we missed some of these. A lot of things have been deleted and it's, I, TikTok stuff is so hard to find. That's why I It hate really is. It. But some of the emails that this lady sent is, I wonder if you, and you know it's her because it's the you. I wonder if you can run your mouth from underground. Holy shit. Wait, that's fucking insane. Oh, it gets worse. Emily, I think, responds something that you can't really see, but she says, I wonder if you'll be able to sell bags from prison. But her response to Lydia's response to Emily is, go drink some bleach and do everyone around you, just the you, a favor. You're fucking weirdly obsessed. It's probably all the meth your mother did while... Pregnant, you lack brain. Mm, if anyone's lacking any brain, I think it's you, Lydia. She then also says, sweetie, I will fucking pull up at your house and drag your ass. You got the right one. It's so funny because like, I'm not saying that judging by seeing someone, you can tell if they can fight or not, but let's just say I don't think she's- No, she doesn't really, look too scrappy. I don't think she's gonna do any damage. Oh, shockingly, she spells Y-O-U this time, but she says, you probably should post lies and false- <laughs> I think she meant to say you probably shouldn't post lies and false accusations on someone who has your address, just saying. So she threatens to dox Emily because Emily ordered- she had to give her the shipping address, so now she has her- I think it's even worse. I don't think she's even threatening to dox. I think she's threatening to hurt her. Oh, well, I mean, but as you just said, it's like, mm. Well, yeah, like, if she really, like, scary, no, but it's still fucking weird. Like, we don't know who she knows, if she knows some fucking guys that can true, pull up true, to her true. house or something. Like, I think it's, like, literally, and uh, again, it's just so stupid to refer to her as a small business. She's just some lady with a Facebook group and some bags. But, like, literally, like, that's the ultimate worst thing you could do as a business owner is weaponize the address that they gave you because they bought a product from you. I mean, that has there has to be like laws against that. Why would anyone ever buy from this woman ever again? I, I don't think they're going to. I would absolutely love for you to post where I ever threatened you or called you out of your name or cussed at you because I didn't. But let's move on to the next part of her video. Also, so she, I don't think she mentions it, but in the background of this green screen video, it's just casually this lady's mugshot. And Emily then shows the comment where she said, will tracking be sent to our email? And Lydia responds, most likely since I can't send messages or you can email with a photo of your bag and address and I can send tracking that way. And another argument of hers was that she didn't have my email, but she did have my email because I posted it in the group. Well, let's move on to the turnaround time. Actually, turnaround time listed on the bag that she purchased was 25 to 48 days. Actually, 48 days? Do you have cows out back that you are like from birth raising them and then turning them into leather yourself no, and creating Jessie, these? Why the I know, fuck she, do you need so much time? Because she doesn't have any bags. Bro, that is such an absurd timeline. Yeah, to pretend like that is a normal, like, I told her it was 40. I already days. get annoyed is... when something's like a week away and I'm just like, oh my God, okay. Cause like you forget you even bought it. You're like, what the fuck? 40 something, like I'm a whole new person. I have new wants and needs at that time. Like I may, I may not even be into that bag at that point. I'm annoyed at Amazon when they only have two day available instead of next Literally, day. Literally, I'm, like, so I'm like, come on, <laughs> chop chop. 40 business days. So that's basically like almost a hundred. Are you kidding? Yeah, she's not making the bags herself. She's not making the bags at all. I know, but also like the only other thing I could think of is if she got the knockoffs maybe from like China or something and she like orders them per order. Oh, like when you order stuff like on in. Wish and it takes like three months. Yeah. To get, yeah. Hmm. 
No, good, good theory. That may be it, but I don't know. That's even giving her the benefit of the doubt that she ever is getting the bag to send. And by the way, her name is Lydia Lee because that is what is on her arrest records. I purchased didn't have a turnaround time specifically listed on it. However, other bags like it was up to 12 to 27 days. Now, mind you, I waited 45 business days. That is like 70 days, way more than 48. If she knew how to talk to customers, we would not be in this situation. If she knew how to communicate with her customers, we would not be in this situation. And she also claims that I asked for a refund of $105, which I didn't. I clearly posted what I paid. But anyways, hopefully this is the last video. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, so again, I think all of Lydia's accounts have since been deleted, but Emily does eventually post one where she shows that like she did get a bag, but not from Lydia. So that's not that important to watch. But my favorite is this one. Prepare yourself. Since this girl is so obsessed with me, do y'all think she would like a pair of my underwear? <laughs> you guys, this is a business owner. Let's not forget that. And I'm gonna go ahead and decline your offer. Thank you. Are you actually out of your fucking <laughs> mind, you lady? Let's rewatch it. <laughs> I don't this want girl to. Is so obsessed with me, do y'all think she would like a pair of my underwear my favorite part is that she doesn't seem like she planned to say underwear kind of like came to her in the moment <laughs> ma'am nobody wants a pair of your underwear let me what like the literally fuck are you saying maybe she just wanted the fucking bag like that's literally all she like i can't stand when people get called out for shit and they're like why are you so obsessed with me it's like nobody is obsessed she with you nobody even cares like, like and then you add the layer on top that she's a business owner and it actually gets deranged like this is just so fucking insane Oh my god, would you like my Ugh. underwear? No, ma'am. No one wants that. Go away. Anyway, I, I, to my knowledge, I'm like, I, I'm not super well versed in the purse gate saga, but I believe that that's pretty much it. <laughs> I really want to ask people if they know about a situation because I've seen it all over TikTok and I keep getting tagged in it and people want us to cover it, but I cannot make sense of it Is because it it's so convoluted. Man? Random man in Atlanta. Yeah, yes. I keep getting too, but I have no idea what it is. All I want is just one TikTok that explains it to me and I can't find it. So like there's apparently a random man in Atlanta, but I don't get how he started. I don't get anything about it. And then he just ended up being like everybody's baby's father. So like he's like fathered like a billion children. I don't know. He's like the Atlanta's version of Nick Cannon. When I search it, it says baby mama's one through seven exposed. Yeah, literally they just keep coming out, but I don't really get what the point of it is. Please, if you know about that situation, can you direct me either to where I can figure out how this originated? Cause in my head I was like, okay, was there a random man walking in Atlanta? Like how did he get named that? Like who's the main, I don't, I don't understand. But anyway, that's it. That's all we have for you guys today. I actually had a lot of fun on this episode. I was unsure what we had in store, but it was uh, quite a journey. You know, I feel like the ones where we don't have um, that much to talk about, it gives us the space to just go on tangents. So um, we yeah, can like, you know, talk sure. about like toxic men and <laughs> reminisce about times that you called me crying and really fun things like that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all we have for you. Hopefully you guys are watching this on Friday. And if you made it to the end, we appreciate you. We were sorry we were late this past Monday, but we, there was an unexpected anxiety attack from both of us. <laughs> Well, that's it. If you guys made it to the end, we appreciate you. And yeah, we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.